Hello and welcome. In this video, we want to talk about limits at infinity for inverse trigonometric functions. Here you can see a list of inverse trigonometric functions. Sine inverse, cosine inverse, tangent inverse, cotan inverse, secant inverse, and cosecant inverse. For these two inverse trigonometric functions, sine inverse and cosine inverse, we don't have limits at infinity. Why? Because if you remember, the x value, the domain of these functions, is limited between negative 1 and 1. So for these two special functions, x, which is here and here, cannot approach infinity or negative infinity. So we don't have limit at infinity for these two functions. And between these four inverse trigonometric functions, Definitely, the most important one is tangent inverse of x, especially about limit at infinity. So, let us start with limit at infinity for tangent inverse of x. What is limit of tangent inverse of x when x approaches infinity? And what is limit of tangent inverse of x when x approaches negative infinity? As you probably know, the limit at infinity, if exists, shows the horizontal asymptote of the function. And if you remember graph of tangent inverse of x or arc tan x, the graph of that function, the graph is something like this. This is the graph of arc tangent of x or tangent inverse of x. And these two horizontal lines show pi over 2 and here shows negative pi over 2. As you can see, this function, tangent inverse of x, has two horizontal asymptotes. y equals pi over 2 and y equals negative pi over 2 are the horizontal asymptotes for tangent inverse of x. And as you can see, when x approaches infinity, when we go far to the right, the graph of tangent inverse of x approaches pi over 2. So the first limit is pi over 2. And the second limit, when we go far to the left, the graph approaches this horizontal line y equals negative pi over 2. So the limit is negative pi over 2. The best way for finding the limit of tangent inverse of x at infinity is to remember its graph. And you can find these two limits from its graph. This is the best way that you can answer this question. For cotangent inverse of x secant inverse and cosecant inverse, you can also look at their graphs and find the horizontal asymptotes. Now look at this example. What is limit of tangent inverse of 2 to the power of x when x approaches infinity? Attention, when x approaches infinity, the exponential function 2 to the x also goes to infinity. The exponent x here goes to infinity, and 2 to the x obviously also goes to infinity. So here, in the bracket, inside the bracket, here, we have an expression that goes to infinity, approaches infinity. And from here, we know that when whatever is here, goes to infinity, the limit of tangent inverse is pi over 2. So what is this limit? This limit is obviously pi over 2. But if you want to write this in more mathematical way, if you want to show a better reasoning for your conclusion that the limit is pi over 2, you can do it this way. You can give a name, you can do a substitution, you can give a name to this expression for example, you can name it something like u. So, if we choose u as 2 to the x, if we choose u as 2 to the x, when 
x approaches infinity, obviously u, which is 2 to the x, u also goes to infinity. This is obvious. And now we can write this limit which we have here in this form. We can write it in terms of u in this way. We can say we have a limit of tangent inverse of u. Remember, we name this u. So now I am going. I am using u instead of two to the x. And instead of x goes to infinity, I am going to put u approaches infinity. Now look at this. This is exactly like this. Here is x. X goes to infinity. Now here we have u and u goes to infinity. And so obviously this limit is pi over 2. Same as here. If you want to show work for your answer, this is how you can show your work. Now look at this example. What is limit of tangent inverse of ln of x when x approaches 0 from the right? Maybe here you ask me, but this is not a limit at infinity, x approaches 0. Yes, that's true. For ln of x, x approaches 0. But in a moment, you will see that when x approaches 0, ln of x approaches negative infinity. So this expression here approaches negative infinity. And because this goes to infinity, this is a limit at infinity in this way. But what is this limit? If we suppose ln of x when x approaches 0 approaches negative infinity. So for a moment, suppose we know that ln of x when x approaches 0 goes to negative infinity. So for a moment, suppose this approaches negative infinity. So whatever is here is approaching negative infinity. And if you remember from here, the tangent inverse when the expression here approaches negative infinity, the limit is negative pi over 2. So, based on this, we can conclude that this limit equals negative pi over 2. But let me tell you why this is true. If you remember graph of ln of x, it's really, really helpful in calculus to remember graph of important functions logarithmic function exponential function inverse trig and trigonometric function at least remember the base functions the functions that we need and we work with them a lot in calculus it's really helpful now look at here if you remember graph of ln of x from its graph you can see that when x approaches zero when we go this way close to zero zero is here the graph of ln of x as you can see approaches negative infinity if we are so close to zero the y value of ln of x is going down without bond so the ln of x approaches negative infinity so from graph of ln of x we have this ln of x when x approaches zero from the right the limit is negative infinity but similar to the previous question if we want to show our work for our answer here we can do it this way we are going to name this expression inside the bracket something like u so we say we suppose u to be ln of x then if x approaches zero from the right which here happens then ln of x goes to negative infinity, which means that u approaches negative infinity. Now, based on this, we are going to rewrite or limit in terms of u. In this way, we say limit of tangent inverse of u as u approaches negative infinity. And we know that this limit equals negative pi over 2.
let me show you one more example what is limit of tangent inverse of x minus 1 over x plus 1 when x approaches infinity here x goes to infinity inside the bracket we have a rational expression first focus inside the bracket let's see how we can find the limit of this expression here when x approaches infinity so for a moment forget the tangent inverse and consider only the expression inside the bracket so we want to see what is limit of x minus 1 over x plus 1 when x approaches infinity if you remember from my previous videos about limit at infinity especially the first video in this regard when we want to find limit at infinity for rational functions we can simply keep the dominant terms in numerator and denominator in numerator between negative 1 and x because x goes to infinity obviously x is the dominant term and in the denominator also x is the dominant term and we can ignore 1 because 1 compared to x which x goes to infinity is nothing so we can ignore it this was the shortcut method which I explained in detail in the first video about limit at infinity. Now, x over x equals 1. So the limit of the expression is 1. But if you need to show your work and you want to find limit in more mathematical way without the shortcut, for these type of limits, we divide every term in the top and every term in the bottom by the highest degree of denominator, which is x. So we are doing this in this way. We divide every term in the top and every term in the bottom by the highest degree of denominator, which is x. x over x and x over x in numerator and denominator is 1. So we have limit of 1 minus 1 over x over 1 plus 1 over x and x goes to infinity. And we know that limit of any number over x which x goes to infinity is 0. So limit of 1 over x in numerator and denominator is 0. So the limit of this expression is 0. And this limit is also 0. So what is this limit? This limit equals 1 over 1 which is 1. Same answer as here. Now that we know the limit of the expression inside the bracket, let's see how we can answer and find this limit so we know that the limit of this expression here is one keep this in your head and no attention if you look at the graph of tangent inverse you can see that it's a continuous function and when we have continuous functions most of the functions that we have in math like trig functions polynomial, exponential, logarithmics, all of these functions are continuous in their domains. And tangent inverse in a special is continuous everywhere in the all real numbers. Now that we know this function is continuous, tangent inverse is continuous, we have this property for the limits that we can move the limit to the inside the bracket. So it doesn't matter if this function is tangent inverse or it's exponential function or is a logarithmic function. As long as this function here is continuous, instead of finding the limit of tangent inverse of the bracket, simply you can bring the limit here, calculate this limit, and then tangent inverse of that number is the limit. Let me do it here, then you can understand this better. So what was the rule? When we have a continuous function, we can move the limit to the inside. Limit can pass it. Which means that we can write this as tangent inverse of limit of x minus 1 over x plus 1 as x goes to infinity. What is this limit? We calculated this limit and we see here that this limit is 1. So this equals to tangent 
inverse of 1. And now, what is the tangent inverse of 1? What is tangent inverse of 1 actually means? It means that what is the angle? So you have to find an angle that the tangent of that angle is 1. That angle is pi over 4. And attention here is not right to say 45 degrees. Your answer should be in radian. Of course, we have 5 pi over 4 also as an angle that the tangent of that angle is 1. But here, because the range of tangent inverse is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, only the pi over 4 is acceptable. So pi over 4 is the answer of this limit. So let's review this question again. Tangent inverse is continuous function. When we have such function, we can move the limit to the inside. And find the limit of the inside and then find the value of the continuous function at the limit value. Like this, which I did here. I hope you like this video. See you in the next videos.